Hey everyone, I've been playing around with some SDR equipment, Software Defined Radio. A little tiny USB device with some electronics inside of it, principally DSPs, very high frequency stuff. What it does is it receives a whole chunk of radio all at the same time, a massive, great big, broad spectrum of bandwidth that you can then visualize on the screen and start picking out little spikes and listening to those particular radio frequency broadcasts. So whilst listening to a ham radio repeater with the SDR software, what I decided to do was just open that repeater with a little Baofeng handheld, and to my surprise, a friend of mine popped up and said hello. Anyway, let's have a play around with this SDR stuff. See what you think. I think it's quite cool. <laughs> so, SDR, the question is, is it any good? Well, from my perspective, having played around with it for a little while, I love the fact that you can see the radio frequencies changing in front of you on the screen at any particular time. In fact, very similar to this little green slug that's just popped up. Let's see what it is. The SDR software is running in the background. It's listening on uh, a reasonably broad spectrum on 70 centimeters right now. And I have a little uh, a Baofeng handheld here. So I'm just gonna uh, test access to one of the 70 centimeter repeaters. Well, you'll see all sorts of spikes pop up as the radio transmits. And then hopefully you'll see a little receive spike pop up and that'll be the repeater sending back its information and opening a channel so that I can have a chat with someone should I wish. Let's turn the volume up so it's going to get a little bit noisy here. Hold on. Testing access, GB3ZB. Testing access, GB3ZB. And there you go. You can hear the repeater just pop up with two little pings. It's transmitting a carrier tone now. And as you can see, if we look at the screen here, we can see this rather bright white light. And there we go. Someone is just trying to actually get back in touch with me. A uh, QRZ, QRZ, let me go again. Hello, Wilf. Good to hear you on, mate. I was just uh, just doing a quick test. I'll call you back in a second. Okay, well, it's working fine. <laughs> okay, appreciate it. Thanks, Wilf. So I don't know if you could hear that, but the clarity of um, of Wilf's voice wasn't very good uh, on the SDR software at all. Why don't we give Wilf a little shout with this tiny little uh, Chinese Baofeng handheld transceiver. We'll plug it into the antenna that the SDR is currently plugged into, which is literally just like a little mag mount on a biscuit tin style antenna. Uh, anyway, uh, long time no hear. Hope you're well. Doing very well, Wolf. Doing very well. Just playing around with some SDR software. Uh, are you are you away fishing at the moment? Are you or something like that? Yeah, okay, Wilf, all completely understood. I hope you're having a wonderful time down there. And, uh, yeah, you're staying dry because there's quite a lot of thunderstorms coming through at the moment. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to plug you back into the SDR, and we'll see what you sound like through the SDR software. So give us a quick over. Have you caught anything? Okay, you're going to unplug the aerial. Unplug the aerial from that. Plug it into the SDR and turn up volume on the SDR.
<laughs> okay, this is the fun bit. I have to now unplug the antenna from there, plug it back into my transmitting handy, and uh, turn the volume down on that. There we go. Yeah, okay, yeah, Will, full uh, understood, mate. <laughs> I'm having a right bit of fun here playing radio and um, and recording a session at the same time, recording a little YouTube video at the same time. So um, so I hope you don't mind. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that neither of our call signs are uh, on the YouTube video, but, um, but it's good to have a quick experiment here with the SDR software. And actually, I've just noticed that the RF gain was turned down quite a lot on the SDR software. So I've just turned the RF gain up. And that seems to have helped significantly. Yeah, lovely to chat. And it's been a long old time. I won't keep you, because I've still got to finish up this video here. But lovely to hear you, mate. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, or two days, or however long it is you're going to spend down there fishing by the river. Yeah, OK. Well, splendid to hear you. And um, for the recording listeners, uh, I'm not a pirate, I'm a farmer. <laughs> hey, John. Um, yeah, so anyway, when all, when all this rubbish is over and done with for uh, hours and, uh, and we can have gatherings and all that, um, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll meet up and, and sample some lovely cider. Uh, I'm, I'm quite fortunate. I've got a nice bottle of homemade stuff here at the moment, which I haven't started yet. Anyway, yeah, I'll wish you seven free and I'll get back to me fishing, but splendid to hear your chat. Enjoy whatever you're up to. Cheers. <laughs> Excellent, Wilf. Yeah, I'll send you a link to the video. All right, mate. Take care. Have a good one. And cheers and beers. Thanks for the chat. Bye for now. Cheers, mate. So it would appear that the RF gain was down quite a way. So, yeah, there we go. That's, that's the key thing. That's the key message, I guess, with this equipment is you need to make sure that you've got your RF gain turned up. <laughs> Literally, that's all it is. It's a tiny little... USB box. It gets quite warm, by the way. It's definitely uh, definitely using a bit of current. On that end of it there, it's got a little SMA connector. And then on the other end of it there, it's got a little USB connector. And that is a software-defined radio. That is a radio that does almost DC to light. In fact, these are the ham bands, ultimately. Yeah, and we can go through all the different ham bands. So 160 metres. I've never operated down at 2,200 metres. But 160 metres, which is um, around uh, 2 megahertz, uh, below 2 megahertz, all the way up to 5.75 gigahertz, which is absolutely bonkers. So my traditional frequencies that I tend to operate on, two meters, so 145 megahertz and 70 centimeters. And then also some of these more popular bands down here, uh, like sort of 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, and um, 80 meters. Uh, you are going to have to perhaps uh, set yourself up with a decent antenna and an antenna tuning unit, an ATU, in order to receive anything on these bands down here at these frequencies. And then you'll probably need, you know, like a, a nice little sort of dipole outside to receive frequencies on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So ultimately then, with this guy and some little antennas, and I've got myself a whole plethora of many different types of antennas that I've made in the past, the plan um, is to take a little laptop out with this tiny thing here. Maybe even, I think you can even get it running with like a little tiny Raspberry Pi, and I could make myself a little tiny a radio receiver uh, for, I think they're about sort of 30 or 40 pounds, these are really quite cool bits of kit. The interface, as I say, is an SMA connector, so that makes life a little bit interesting for some people, because you're probably used to dealing with BNC connectors or PR259 connectors and that kind of stuff. But you can get little adapters uh, that take care of that for you. So, SDR, is it worth it? Well, it's not bad. Um, certainly love the fact that you can analyze a whole spectrum of frequencies and just sort of grab one frequency from, from that lot. So it's really interesting to be able to see radio happening on the screen in front of you. And I think, uh, I think that's really the thing that sort of captured my imagination. As always, guys and girls, thanks ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering on YouTube. Give us a good old thumbs up and make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks again. Bye for now.